Last night's episode of Glee was entitled Shooting Star, and it is currently under fire from some groups for featuring a school shooting. When I was on Facebook this morning, I saw a link to an article on Cafe Mom that argued that the people at Glee should have, quote-unquote, reached out to the folks in Connecticut to give them a heads up. They also claim that Glee, quote-unquote, used a national tragedy for ratings, and the producers didn't have the decency to give the people most affected by that tragedy a heads up, and that that's more unsettling than the concept behind the episode itself, and because they didn't do that, they lack human compassion. I read this article before watching the episode, but it still made me mad, for a lot of reasons. So what do they suppose should have happened? Compile a list of all the emails of everyone who lives in Newtown, Connecticut, and then send them out an email saying not to watch Glee? A friend of mine said that the superintendent should have warned people, as if they don't have enough already on their plate, and as though it's not registration season and in addition to their daily duties they also have to oversee a registration. And if they were to do that, what's next? Every time they know about something that could be unsafe for kids to watch, they'll email out an email to everyone saying, do not watch this. I know that's taking a little bit far, but I mean, you get the point. And whatever happened to parents monitoring what their kids are watching? The Newtown shooting happened at an elementary school. What elementary kids are watching Glee? That's irresponsible parenting in and of itself. Also, this is not the first time a show has featured a school shooting and it won't be the last. Just like the Newtown shooting was not the first and it won't be the last either. In regards to the episode though, I felt it was really well done. Well, the shooting part was really good, and the rest of it felt a bit all over the place, but whatever. Every episode has a theme that the Glee kids sing songs about. For this episode, it was last chance, because Brittany thinks that a comet slash meteor slash whatever is going to come and hit Earth, and then we're all going to die. Yes, this happened before, and yes, they acknowledge that. The shooting doesn't happen until about 20 minutes into the episode, which I thought was kind of interesting. They could have made it the whole episode, but they didn't, and I respect that, you know, it is what it is. Even though they only spent probably about 15 minutes of them in the room when the shooting is happening, it still felt a little drawn out, but in a good way, like in an anxiety-provoking way, and you know, in a good anxiety-provoking way, because this is a school shooting, you're supposed to be like freaking out for the characters, you know. And so I thought that was really well done, and it was heartbreaking, and it felt realistic. If you've ever been in a school during a lockdown, you know what that particular kind of dread feels like. I can only imagine what it would be like if you actually heard the gunshots and actually knew that there was somebody in the school with a gun. Going back to the idea that other shows have featured shootings, in 2004, Degrassi had two episodes that featured a school shooting. It was a two-parter, but the Degrassi episodes are about 20 minutes each, so that means that it was like the same length as the Glee episode. But the way that they addressed the issue was way different than how Glee addressed the issue. And seeing as how that was almost 10 years ago now, procedure and what would happen in that situation has changed. For instance, in Glee, Mr. Shu seemed to have a plan of action of what would happen if there was a school shooting. He got everyone in a good spot to protect them, and he made sure that the doors were shut and everything like that. However, I know that realistically, as a teacher, when these sort of things happen in life, you're supposed to get the kids out in the hallway and bring them into safety, which would be your room. But other than that, it seemed pretty legit. And for the story, I understand why they didn't bring other kids into the room. Anyway, back to my point. Degrassi took this issue of school shootings as an issue of bullying. They dove into the reason of why the shooter did what he did. Degrassi basically argued that bullying is the cause of school shootings. I disagree. This would suggest that everyone who has been bullied would be a school shooter. So that would mean everyone, because everyone has been bullied. But I guess that's a topic for another video. Degrassi argues that the school shooter is a victim, even though he's the one who is perpetrating the school shooting. And they take that one step further. Degrassi argues that the school shooter is a victim. He is a victim of bullying, and therefore it's not really his fault that he becomes a school shooter because somebody put him in that situation. They get the school shooter to the point where he feels that it's logical to shoot people. So when he's going around the school with the gun, he's thinking logically of the people that he's going to shoot. At one point, a character comes up to him and she shows compassion towards him. And so he was going to shoot her, but then she showed compassion. And then he was like, oh, well, I won't do it then. Again, that shows logic. In the episode, there are some kids who say this kid is a psycho, you know, he's, he's messed up regardless of what happened. And then there are other people who are saying, well, you know, he was the victim of being a bully, so then he was just a victim in the long run. So they take both kind of sides, but it's more apparent that they're trying to make it so that he's more of a victim than a psycho killer. And that's a respectable, interesting way to take it, and like I said, I respect it, I disagree, but it makes for a good story, I guess. Glee, on the other hand, did not delve into the shooter. 
They focused on the glee kids stuck in the choir room. They focused on the actual victims of the school shooting. The ones who have their, as Mr. Shu puts it, uh, innocence, idealism, and feeling of safety taken away from them by the perpetrator. Nobody is hurt or killed, but these things are still taken away from them during the shooting. And I really like the way that Glee took this issue. Like I have mentioned, and I'm sure you figured out, I really dislike the way that Degrassi did it. But the way that Glee took this issue, it makes it so that, you know, n the shooter isn't always a victim. And they didn't specifically say that the shooter wasn't a victim. But obviously the people who are there, who are actually being victimized by these shootings, are the victims. Their lives have been changed forever. Now here comes the spoilers. There are some things that I just don't get about last night's episode. The police find no bullet casings, bullet holes, etc. So then they search the school and install metal detectors and cameras. Fine. Sue confesses that she was responsible for the shooting because she had a gun locked up in her office and that morning she was doing a safety check and the gun went off and then she dropped it and then the gun went off again. Fine. She says she has the gun because of a lack of a mental health care system, people not watching their kids, and gun nuts who think Obama's going to take their guns away, and so there's a full arsenal in every home. Okay, fine. Then she tells Principal Figgins that she has had extremely successful students that became CEOs and a lesbian secretary of state, but she'll only be remembered for this. Figgins explains that there is a zero tolerance policy for teachers having guns. Fine. Okay, so I was rolling with it, I guess. But then it turns out that Sue is covering for one of her cheerleaders named Becky. Becky has Down syndrome and wants to stay in high school because she's afraid of the real world and she said that she can't go to college. Becky was upset and went to Sue, telling her things along these lines. Then she pulls a gun out of her bag, not pointing it at Sue, but still. Sue gets up from her desk, goes over to Becky, and calmly asks for the gun. When handing it over to Sue, Becky accidentally makes the gun go off, drops it, and then the gun goes off again. Sue has always been a mentor to this girl, since she reminds Sue of her sister who also has Down syndrome, so I guess she felt the need to cover up for her. But that's not the point. It's unacceptable for Sue to give up everything for a girl who brought a gun to school. Have the writers forgotten that Sue is a single mom? How is she going to support her kid? I think that's something Sue would have taken into account before just dropping everything. And literally endangering her whole future. Overall, I think it was a very interesting episode. I thought the emotion and everything was great during the scenes when the kids were stuck in the choir room. I thought the rest of the episode, like the whole catfishing thing to Brittany singing a love song to Lord Tubbington, which was hilarious, just saying, and Beast professing her love to Mr. Shu was weird and unnecessary. The shooting was painful, but I think what was more painful was Coach Beast asking Mr. Shu to be the man in her life. But the weirdness was forgiven by the great ending when they sang Say by John Mayer and it was edited to show the kids video recorded messages to loved ones during the shooting. The point of the episode, I feel, was a lot like Rent's message, no day but today. Live every day like your last. And can you get a better message than that? Why don't people actually watch the thing that they're bitching about before they start bitching about it? And to wrap everything up. Let's just say it was a weird way to send off Jane Lynch to Broadway's Annie. Thanks for watching, I really appreciate it.